What's up, everybody? Money Moicano here, Iago, the editor. And today we have money. Hmm. You have to edit it there, my brother. Money Moicano podcast home team, my brother. Let's go. What's up, Iago? How are you doing, my brother? I'm doing great, brother. How about you? How was the training today? Very, very good. The training was very, very good. Today, I don't know what happened, but Pahumpa, my coach, was, was crazy today. Why and maybe that? I know what it was. Because of Patoja, people... bro? No, no, because people from UFC was, they were, they were filming, right? Okay. So, so the gym was busy and stuff, but it was a great training, actually, and the things are doing great. How about you, my brother? Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing great, brother. I did the, the podcast for the, for the members this morning, the podcast for people to watch you react into the fights and stuff, and was just chilling here. So remember, guys, if you, if you are a member, we have content for, for you every week, okay? So make sure you, you consider to join the membership, okay? Yeah. And uh, what are thing. you talking today, bro? Ah, well, it's just a podcast, but I want to talk about UFC 296. Okay. And we have Josh Emmett and Bryce Mitchell. And let me tell you something, my brother. There was a clean KO. Yeah. Josh Emmett got power. He is powerful. And he's, he, he's a little bit old right now. But what was your thought? Your, your thoughts about the fight and what's next for Josh Emmett? Brother, I thought, and we talked about that a little bit, Bryce, Bryce Mitchell, I think he had the, the wrong game plan. Wrong, he, you shouldn't brawl like that against a guy like Josh Emmett. That was insane, insane thing to do. He, he has a thing on the striking. That is a thing that I don't actually like. He tries to catch the punches with the with one hand, you know, he puts his hand forward, ki kind of like a Dracula, but not like that. Kind of like a Sean Strickland, trying to parry the punches, parry the punches. But of course, yeah. he's not a striker like Sean Strickland. And I think that's the thing that made Josh Emmett uh, knock him out that clean. Because right before, right before the, the knockout, Rice Mitchell tried to parry a, a feint that Josh Emmett did. And I, I think Josh Emmett saw that, saw his hand. And he just tried again, but right now he threw that powerful overhand with the right hand, and that's it. For, for Bryce Mitchell, I have no idea who he's fighting next, brother. I need to check the rankings. Let me see this. He, he is still young. Yeah, he is 29 years old, years old. 16 and 2. But let me tell you something, brother. Look his topology and go jeans and affiliation. He fights... At Barata. The names of his gym, Barata MMA. I yeah. don't know if these guys know what Barata means. Probably not. But Barata is a Portuguese word for roaches, right? Yeah, cockroaches. Yeah. And, and if you see, like, the the people that fight for the gym, most of them are, like, amateur, right? Two and three, two and two amateur. Yeah. Uh, the other guy has, like, 12 and three, but... Most of them are amateur, brother. I don't, I don't know how he can be competing in a top level. And let me be honest with you, I don't even know how he beat Edson Barbosa because if, if you, if we see his trajectory in MMA, okay, he beat Tyler Damon, Bobby Moffat, this, all these guys. I think this Bobby, Mo uh, no, he's not good. Bobby Moffat, Matt Sales, Charles Rosa. Andre Philly, I thought he would beat all these guys, Charles Rosa and Andre Philly, to be honest. But yeah. Edson Barbosa, I could not believe my eyes. We fought in the same night, and I, I was watching this little kid, like skinny kid, dominating Edson Barbosa. I could not believe myself. Yeah. I could not believe my eyes because I don't know, man. I think if they do the, the rematch, Barbosa is not lo losing for the guy. Especially after Ilya Topuria and Josh Emmett. I don't know. I still think Bryce Mitchell is going to succeed in UFC. Especially because he has a big platform. A huge platform. If you don't know who Carson Tucker is. Do you know who is Carson Tucker? No. Carson Tucker uh, was a, a reporter uh, for, for Fox News, right? And... He was like the biggest 
podcast, biggest audience, not podcast, but b the biggest audience on the internet in the United States. Yeah. You know, the guy has more views, um, especially I think on radio too, but uh, on Fox News, the internet, the guy is just, uh, le let me just show who this guy is. In July of 2020, Tucker Carlson Tonight broke the record for highest rated program in USA, Cable News History. Garnering an average nightly audience of 4.33 million viewers. So in 2020, every night, motherfucker was getting like 4.3 million viewers every night. That's insane, brother. Insane. Like the guy's insane. And, and I will be really honest, I really like him because he's not a guy that is just a newsman, you know? He's very smart. Very, very smart guy. If you go to the to, to YouTube and watch one of his speeches, he's talking about democracy, he's talking about founding fathers, he's talking about uh, a republic, and he's talking about the ways things should, how things should be. Very, very smart, eloquent guy. And do you like Dio Von? Do you know Dio Von? Have the no humorist? Idea. No. The, that's I, a Tel Del Von in, in Portuguese, but a Tel Von. T H E O V O N. Oh, Tio. He's Von. like a okay. Tio Von. He's like a comedian. He's a podcaster too. If you watch Tucker Carlson Tio Von podcast, you you're going to love him. Man, look at this. Look the name of this motherfucker. Theodor Captani Von Kurnatovsky the Third. That, that's a good name, brother. That's a royalty name. Theodor Capitani Von Kurnatovsky the Third. So that's why they call Tio Von. Yeah. But uh, Theo Von is a great comedian and he tried to watch one day so we can discuss okay. Tucker Carlson but uh, the whole thing is Tucker Carlson he was in, in, in Fox News and for some reason uh, they kicked him out I think he was getting even bigger than the, the channel if you know what I mean and then he made a deal with Twitter X now with Elon Musk yeah. so he showed his programs on, on X Okay. So you're watching him from the internet now. It's not YouTube. It's not, he, and people going to say he's going, he's going to build his own platform, you know? Do you know that podcast PBD that I always talk yeah, to? Yeah, Patrick, but David, yeah. he offered he offer, uh, Tucker Carlson 100 million to join the, the PBD podcast and start to do a, a company together. 100 million. He, That's money, he doesn't want the 100 million. He wants... He want to do his own thing. And and why I'm talking all about that? Because he Bryce Mitchell is all the time on Tucker Carlson show. Really? Oh yeah. Talking those crazy you know? shit he talks every time. <laughs> talk, talk, talk. <laughs> yeah, let me see. I think the last one Okay, that crazy shit. <laughs> Man, he's so crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's crazy. And and let's see, Tucker Carlson. Yes. So we we have a UFC star, Bryce Mitchell, sit down with Tucker on Fox, on mm -hmm. X. We have uh, Tucker, uh, ep ep episode 53, Bryce Mitchell just got bumped up to the main cards tomorrow UFC. There is a reason he's a fan favorite. And we, and we have the interview on X, like I say, right? Let me just... Brother, I'm so blessed beyond belief. It's such an honor to be here on the show. Thank you for having me. Whatever I've got to share. So Thank you for having me. He knows the importance of being on, talk, on Tucker Carlson's show, my brother. And, and after what we watch the video, I'm going to talk about that because that's not an easy thing to do, you know? That's not an easy thing to do. And Bryce Mitchell has a, a, a Bible. No, a t-shirt with the Bible. Holy Bible and him holding. So let me see what I really think say. So it starts with about four years ago, me being a broken, lost person who needed guidance and needed wisdom, and I turned my life to Christ. Okay, so the first thing I did when I turned my life to Christ is I prayed for a wife, basically every day. And it. So what what he's saying, like his life, Yago is not is not hearing, but I'm just going to give you my insight. Why I think Tucker Carlson likes him so much because he's very vocal about the Bible. You know, he's, he's very vocal about uh, how about the way he see things, you know, and sometimes could be strange, like flat earth and stuff. <laughs> of course, I don't believe in that. But if he believes that, but he's being vocal and, and so be it. Right. And I think uh, that that's why people like him. 
it was months and months and months, maybe even a year went by, and it was just, I could not find the right woman that I clicked with, and I'm kind of crazy, so it takes that right woman, you know what I mean? I know the feeling. Um, I go on your show. Well, check this out, Tucker. I go on your show, okay? Um, get millions of views. The most exposure I've ever had in my life. And this really good-looking woman from Pennsylvania messages me on the internet, and she says, hey. I said, hey. We start talking. Man, that's crazy. I didn't know about that. Uh, you're not hearing, Iago, but look at that. Bryce Mitchell met her wife because Tucker Carlson. Really? Really? Yeah, really, because he was saying uh, he, he was broke and uh, uh, his life was a mess and stuff. And then he prayed, he converted to Christianism and he was praying for God to a wife every day. And then he went in Tucker Carlson show. And after that, millions of views and, and a girl from Pennsylvania messaged him on Instagram saying she watched he, him on, on Tucker Carlson. How crazy is that, my brother? Brother, have you have, do you remember his interview on, on Beast Sports Yes, I, re I remember. Do saying they were, remember the other wife was crazy, the, the girlfriend. Was, yeah, yeah, it was a witch and stuff. Yeah, I remember that. And now he and then he went on Tucker Carlson's show. He talked all the crazy stuff that he talks all the time, and he probably found a girl that likes all the crazy stuff that he also likes. If you yeah, all the crazy stuff that he says, man. You know, the world is something else, right? There's there's a person for everyone here. Of course. Amazing. Stuff. I think that's awesome. L let's keep let's keep watching this. And we really bonded over our hatred of the government. And Ah, and he's saying that we really bonded over our, our hatred for government. That's a good statement, bro. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice, brother. My wife, now she is pregnant. I'll have a kid in four She's months. Pregnant. And nice. Now here's here's where the story gets even better. We were arguing over what to name the kid, and, and he's gonna be a boy. It's it's a boy. We couldn't pick a name, and she said to me, what do you think about the name Tucker? I said, I love that name. So <laughs> my first boy's name will be Tucker. I didn't know about that. They were they were talking about what's going to be the name, and it's going to be a boy, and they agreed to call the boy Tucker. Can you believe that? That's man, that, that's, that's kind of crazy, right? So right, they met. That's a movie. That's a movie. <laughs> that's, a movie. that's for sure. It's a movie. Man, that's right. crazy. He's living a movie. Man, but I, I'll be honest with you. I like this motherfucker. He's crazy as shit, but I like him. I do like, like him, brother. Family. But you know what? There, there's a lot of crazy people, bro. Talk shit about flat earth and stuff that is genuine bad people, bro. Okay. I see that all the time. All I know what time. you mean. You, you see these motherfuckers talking about this stuff, and then they are coming with a with an evil shit behind it, you know? Yeah, agenda, and, let's say. They have an agenda. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And Bryce Mitchell, I never see him like that, you know? No. He just talks and shit. He said, brother, I have my farm. I want to make yeah. money with my farm, so I don't I don't depend on money, actually. Yeah. He, he wants to make uh, food off his farm, of course. He wants to, to take milk off his cows and stuff. And yeah. fuck that, bro. It's yeah. only that. I never see him talking shit to, to with the, the evil agenda and stuff. Yeah, no, I agree, and... Like I say, I watched the video, the video, the, the, the movie on Netflix, they talk about government and stuff and like a, a war in America. We're going to talk about that. About that. And I think this, movie. that's a good movie. We're going to talk about that. But I think is is the kind of vibe that I feel Bryce Mitchell, right? And he thinks like, man, of course, government. They, they are not here for you. Let's be honest. I think all over no. the world, my brother, government yeah. is definitely not here to help you. You know who government is trying to help? Themselves, my brother. Yeah. A and everybody. Rich people. Man, like, everybody that is, yeah. everybody that, that is on the power, they just want to be on power, brother. Yeah. If, if the guy has a, like a billionaire, huge money, he wants power. You know? And exactly. if the guy has power, he wants money. So they, they they walk or they walk uh tie hands together you know so so but my my problem with this is i think they 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 talk about government as it it's like a cult you know yeah like it's is evil people is like people from hell like demons and lizard people i don't believe in that i just believe no, the government not, i just believe i think that that's where they miss you know the point because yeah. of course government is bad my brother you have to be suspicious about the government yes. because because they are people they are people they you know and, and and they want to stay in power but i don't think they are lizard people and, and the flat is earth and and there is somebody controlling we're going to talk about that uh, later 
but yeah. it's just funny because the beginning of the video we just uh, we just discovered that Bryce Mitchell has a son we will have a son named Tucker with a yeah, girl that he met, that he met of, watching the amazing, Tucker man. Carlson uh, show that's just unbelievable my bro. Yes. that's a good cut okay so make sure you cut exactly. that shit well, so it'll be Tucker James Mitchell Look, Talk to say, yeah, Tucker, good news. Tucker, Tucker James Mitchell. When he's in fifth grade and all the other boys realize what his first name rhymes with, that's the moment where he's going to become a tough little dude. Oh, brother, he's going to be tough. He's not going to go to school. He's going to be homeschooled, brother. And and that just brings us to a great point here because uh, I've got to completely homeschool him. I'm going to raise him um, against this culture because this culture is destructive. It's yeah. demonic. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And he will be homeschooled. And like I said, that's why God. that's why, that's why why he he is on Tucker Carlson because now he's talking about the culture. You know, and how he sees the the culture right now being demonic and being this and being that. So I think that is the point that they can agree because of of course Tucker Carlson is not a guy that believes the 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 earth is flat. But I'm pretty yeah. sure he believes that the nation is not going to a, on the right direction right now. He'll be unvaccinated, um, and he's he's gonna learn my way of life. What a blessed kid. If you said that to me 10 years ago, I would have thought to myself, this Bryce Mitchell's a little off grid. And now I'm thinking, you're on the leading edge of what will be obvious to everybody in five years. And now, and now, uh, Tucker Carlson is talking about we what we were saying. Because he was saying, like, 10 years ago, I would think Bryce Mitchell is crazy. But now, nowadays, I think that, that kid is in good hands. So you, we can see the change, right? The, the ways... The ways people are are changing politically. Anyway, that that was the video, and my whole point on here is talk about how good for Bryce Mitchell is to have that platform. Because if we see we see that video, almost three million views, right on on X. Maybe they have on YouTube. I don't know, but I think that's what are going to get Bryce Mitchell in good fights from here you know yeah for sure and th that's the thing because even if he's talking crazy shit and people go there to to see him talking crazy shit it's like us brother we like we like him because of that but i want to see if i and i was kind of disappointed that he, he didn't have anything to do you know brother yeah, I, man, I thought he would go there with the bible and say more stuff brother and that would be amazing he got the fight too early right he got the fight of yeah, short notes so i don't know notice, if yeah. he was ready to but I don't know, was, was, a, I, I would not say that take TKO, people via KO or TKO, that was a clearly a KO. Yeah. And after the, the fight, he was unconscious on the ground. That was, that was tough to watch, right? Yeah. And let me tell you something, right now he's, he's number 10, 10 on the rankings and number nine is Evloev, brother. And Evloev doesn't fight for a long time. Not a long time, but since me. No, but Evloev, Evloev is fighting the the English kid. Arnold Allen. Okay, yeah. No, he's fighting right up there, bro. Yeah, so maybe Bryce Mitchell is fighting Chikazi then. Maybe. Because Chikazi was supposed to fight Josh Emmett. Exactly. I don't know. I don't see many matchups that he would do great. Especially, man, because... Like I say before, his style, I don't know how, I don't know how he's going to beat, uh, like, even on a rematch, Edson Barbosa. I don't think he yeah. beat Edson Barbosa in a rematch. And Sojik but Yusuf me... is right there, too. And yeah. He's coming for us from maybe Sojik, yeah. maybe he's fighting Sojik. Yeah. And I want to talk about, uh, to talk to you about the movie. What's the name of the movie in English? Leave the word behind the name of the movie. So... If you didn't watch, guys, leave the world behind. On Netflix, starring Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, and more people. The, the first thing that got me to watch that movie was I was watching PBD podcast, and PBD said Barack and Michelle Obama they were the executive producers for the film, you know. And I was I was intrigued about that because why a former president will help in do a movie what kind of movie that they, they could help you they could uh help to do you know i i would i would say a, a film about politics right and this is exactly what the movie is about in my opinion politics 
this movie is exactly about politics. But I don't know how much Barack Obama helped in the movie, right? Because what a producer do? That's my first question. What an executive producer do? And I'll have to Google it. Mostly executive producer acquire screenplays for development. They pitch ideas to the TV commissioners and deal with the legal, financial, and marketing aspects of the TV series. They are the spokesperson for the production and have the final say. The extent to which they are involved in the production itself varies. So, I don't know if you know this, but I have seen uh, some time ago, Barack Obama likes to read books. Of course, he's a president. He, he must read books, right? He was a president, of course. So, this movie was based on a, a book. And I want to read that book really bad right now. So uh, you know what the name of the book? It's the same name. It's the same name. And you know what? When I was watching no, no. the movie, I I, uh, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. But at the you remember that scene when the boat comes to the the beach, guys. If you didn't if you didn't yes. watch the movie, this was yes. this is on the trailer. Okay. When I saw that yes. scene, I I, I knew. I said, oh, this was a book. But let me ask about, about, about that scene. Yeah. Do you think, b because the whole premise of the, 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 we don't know until the end, right? But the whole promise of the movie is... Spoilers, guys. Spoiler alert. If you didn't watch Spoiler the movie... Alert. Don't, don't watch. Yeah. yeah. Don't watch from here the podcast. But, but we don't know, right? Uh, f first of all, I want to talk about the critics. A lot of people have been very critical about the movie. Yeah saying that was a bad movie that man i was the, the whole movie tense about yeah, exactly, what is going on exactly Me i was the whole it. movie you know the the whole time what the fuck is going on my brother yeah. and then on on the on the, the on when sh when the ship went to the sand in the beach i thought man what the fuck is going on after that you know it was a cyber attack right yeah and and they messed messed up the communications and the raiders and all that stuff, right? Yes. So that's why the 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 ship went to the land because he was no no direction. But do you think uh, in a real in the real life the ship would do like hit like they like did it did? No, I don't think so. And I'm gonna explain uh, why. Because uh, do you remember the Teslas? Yes. There was a great there was a great thing of the movie right making the teslas yeah the heat the yes so there's a part of the movie uh okay if you're listening to here i think you already saw the movie so i'm not gonna be explaining myself but the boat is controlled by a person right Tesla, I, I, tesla I don't was know. autopilot i don't know i think the boat but, i think the boat is not an auto autopilot so the, the the captain of the ship would see the you know he would see the land he wouldn't go there yeah that, that that's a good point i i i didn't i have not thinking about that because maybe the the captain could move with the i don't know how exactly they call this. exactly the the boat is right? not controlled and turn by... left or right yes, yeah but exactly. the boat but but even even if you think the the boat going in a straight straight lane line right yeah i don't think he would like almost explode the sand i think when he got very close to the sand he would crash on the, you know, yeah. before God. I don't know how to say the name, but tipo um coral na view assim antes. Yes, entendeu? yes. So the, the the boat, it went straight to the sand, straight to the beach, you know, and it didn't stop before. So the people that were sitting on the beach, they had to move because the boat just went like really inside the sand. And what you're saying is that it would stop way, way before right way way yeah yeah, yeah i exactly. think that depends yeah. on the on the beach if you think about it. because if the the beach is really the water is really shallow i think you would have yes. stopped it before too you stop it before that's my problem and uh, my, my other problem with the movie is the animals brother why the animals were messed up yeah that that is a thing that i want to read the book because of that because that that is the know. part that doesn't make any sense, right? The cyber attacks it didn't mess yeah. with the. Oh, but there's a ah, there's a part of the movie I remember. They they heard it on the radio. They heard it on the radio. They said something, messed with the the animals' migration. But what? But what was? I what was? Remember, because brother. a lot of a, a lot of stuff without explanation. And, and, and another thing that was 
that was thinking why the teeth of the guy was falling, the kid. Because of the sound, right? The, the guy. Because of the sound. The, the yeah, Kevin because remember Bacon, he say. Yeah, Kevin Bacon thinks it's because of the sound. He said the same thing happened in Cuba. And let me tell you something. I, I remember the news, bro. You Google that? I, no, I remember when I saw the news of that uh, happening in Cuba. I saw that news when it happened. What you mean? In real life? In real life, my brother. You can Google no, it. No, no. Google Let me it. See. Google it. How, how I Google okay. that? Cuba. Cuba sound, sound attack. Okay. Attack. Look at that. Havana syndrome, it's called. 2018. I remember this. Look at that. In the real world, it was reported that quite a few people in Cuba went through it in 2016. Then, then you revealed that microwave radiation was beamed out through sound which led to many people losing their teeth and falling sick. That's true, my brother. Yes, it is. Like, it, it's true. true. Somebody is saying that this happened, right? We don't know if it's actually, actually true. But I remember the news, brother. I, I read it on the... I, I remember 2018. I remember the shit. I was on college and I remember reading this news. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know about that. But, but... So, man, that was a good movie. And... And in the end, we saw the guy like Bryce Mitchell. Yeah, Kevin right? Bacon did he, the, the character. He was the guy that would survive, right? Yeah, yeah. He was the <laughs> guy that, that would survive. Do you remember the first time he appears on the movie? The Julia Roberts, she goes on the market and she sees him. Do you remember that? Yes. And yes. I thought the movie was going to a, a, another thing because he looks just like Ethan Hawke, brother. He looks really like he, her husband. And Who is Ethan Hawke? Ethan Hawke is Julia Roberts' husband. It's Clay. It's the father of the kids. Ah, okay. Okay. Ah, you, you mean on the, on the movie? On the movie, on the movie. The okay. guy that is like Bryce Mitchell, the prep guy, he looked for me a lot like Ethan Hawke on the, the first scene that she sees him. And I was like, man, this, this movie is going to be about copy. They go, they go to be copy. They, they will have doppelgangers and stuff. I thought that, you know, I thought he was seeing her husband like another the future or something, yeah, something like dimension. that yeah exactly this is what i think the movie was when i saw that scene because he looks very alike ethan hawk brother but then he was not that and he was just a prep guy and he's probably surviving brother i don't know yeah. because he doesn't have a bunker right and yeah it, and i don't know for how long the other thing that i like about the movie was was when the the owner of the house yeah what was his name i i don't remember i'll have to check do you remember, because on the beginning he said he was at the, the playing piano or something like that, right? He was in an orchestra. On, on an orchestra, yeah. on a concert. His name is George. His name like is that. George. George. But he was talking to the girl, to, to, to Julia Roberts actually, and he was saying he's like a financial advisor, yes, right? Yes, he is. But he was not that playing was, on the orchestra. He was not playing on the orchestra, but yeah. he was a financial advisor for... for Billionaires. For billionaires, yes, right? Yes. And and that was what we were talking about on the beginning of the podcast. Exactly. L right. So, so, but on, on the on the movie, he was saying there is no Illuminati. There is no, uh, like uh, how they call globalists. Yeah. Th that's people creations. The truth is way simple, right? Yeah. He says, nobody, he says, no, no body, shit. Nobody's in control of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that got me thinking. So maybe, maybe there are people in control, right? Producing these movies <laughs> to tell people that there is nobody on the control. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? That's what Bryce and Mitchell would think about that movie for sure. Of course. <laughs> yeah. and, and the, and the, and the movie. You know, in the movie, Bryce Mitchell had survived, my brother. Yeah, Bryce Mitchell have survived. I don't know for how long. He would have like survived. Say, but so, 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 so let, listen to me. I think that, why I think that that movie is political. Because I think Julia Roberts, uh, especially, I saw that on, a, on, a, on another channel, Jurandia, Brazilian channel that I recommend a lot. is in Portuguese, but the guy is very good with movies. Yes. And, and, and he was saying like, the colors were very important on this movie. And every time they, they, they show Julia Roberts and the husband, they use the color blue, you know, the okay. color blue. And every time they show the Bryce Mitchell guy was the color red. And he was explains because 
the blue color is for Democrats and the red color is for Republicans. So he was showing on the movie how would Republicans and Democrats act in the like uh, if the world if the shit is going down. Yeah, that's you cool, know? man. I didn't realize that. Yes, neither do I. But after watch the movie and saw that, I say that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because, because like you say, I think they were trying to represent the the Bryce Mitchell guy and the wife as the same man, one but political difference. Okay. You know? One more liberal and another one more Republican, and that's why you saw the guy that was the Republican. He cared. He care about. He care about more himself. You know, yes. when they show up, they say, no, man, this is for me. This is for, for my family. And I think people that are more political to the right, they think about that. Like my, my people first and then others. Yes. And liberals usually, they, they, they say, ah, no, everybody, we want to help everybody. But if you remember, man, I think that movie is so political because of that. Because do you remember when he was writing? What's his name? Anthony Hawks? Ethan Hawks. What's his name? Ethan Hawke was like, he, he go outside to see something and then he saw a Mexican woman yes. and the Mexican woman asked for help and he just freak out and he, he goes away yeah. and he go, come back home and he start to talk to the lady and he start to cry. I leave the woman behind and this and that. And I think that's very political yeah. because, because I think that's what happened. You know, some people that are liberals, they think, ah, oh, it's okay. We have to help. Uh, minorities who have to help people, but when the shit going down, nobody cares about the others, bro. That's very true. And there's a, a a very important point of the movie that is Julia Roberts' opinion on person. Do you remember? Yes. She hates yes. people. That's yes. what she said. She hates people. And, and there's a, a specific scene where she talks about that, and she she says like, "Man, when I when I remember what people do to each yeah. other, just to just to." gain something, I, I remember that I hate everybody. And if you think about that, George, he was doing something for them because do you remember the gun? Yes. He had a yes. gun on his yes. house. Yes. yes. Okay. He could pick that gun, point to them. No, but say, he was the clearly the good guy. Right now. George was clearly he the was good guy. Be yes, he was clearly the good guy, but he could do that. He could do that. And Ethan Hawke, even being helped by George, he didn't know he had a gun, but he was in George's house, even being helped. He saw the he sees the woman, and of course, he's not so close to me. He doesn't she doesn't even speak yeah. English. I don't need I don't feel the yes. need to help her. So and then not the goes, need, not the need, because in the end he was crying about that. But I think Yeah, bro. Not, not the need. I think you know he got think? scared and stuff. But let me tell something. That, that's the whole whole point of the movie. And that and that and that was was funny because in the end of the day, like I say, uh, the blue, every time Julia Roberts was wearing blue, especially when the first time that yeah. you see George and and actually they were being racist to him, right? Because yes, he went over were, there and you say, I don't believe in him. This guy, just because he's black, he's, he's watching a concert, right? And and, yeah. and and she, I, we don't even know. We don't. We we didn't see photos. We didn't even heard his, know, car. his car. We didn't even heard exactly. his car. Yeah. And, and and the crazy thing is, when they find out the the house is 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 his house, right? Because yeah. they left and they they go back, right? And they yeah. say we don't have any uh, 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 Anywhere, anywhere to go, go. we don't have free. anywhere to go. And yeah. he say okay, and and and, and his and his uh, his daughter say don't let them go, and he lets him come back to the house, and they are yes. living on the guest room, and the family was living yes, on this. Yes, yes. And I say, how crazy is that? If I am on my house yeah. and I receive people back, I say no, brother, I'm not gonna be on the guest room. You guys going to be in the guest room. Yes, okay, guys, you can come back, it's cool, but you have the And to be honest now, okay? with you, I, if I were George, I would not let him get back. 100% not. Brother, I think I would I would uh, act exactly like Bryce. <laughs> of course, my brother. To be honest. Of course, my brother. Well, I'm, not, I'm not kidding about you, because you know what? I have seen a lot of series, movies, and all this shit about the, uh, apocalyptic stuff, 
And man, imagine this, okay? You have your family on your house, people knock on your door and say, I need help. Yeah. And you see, it's a father with two yeah. daughters, two young daughters. And you think about, man, he's just a father with two daughters, he needs help. Yeah. Okay? But the same way this guy is trying to protect, you are trying to protect yeah. your yeah. family, this guy will do anything he can to protect her, And you don't know them, family. my brother. You don't know them. You don't, you don't know them. them and they, if it, imagine if this guy realizes, he, he look at them, he realizes that, okay, you have a lot of food here. He has a lot of uh, of supplies, and but this supplies is going to end one day. And he has a whole family here. What if I kill them and keep their supplies? My brother, that's a normal thing to think about, you know? You know what I mean? Maybe this guy is not grateful at all, brother. And he will go there. You're going to help him. And this motherfucker is about to kill you next. So I'm, I'm with Bryce Mitchell. And another thing, the Bryce Mitchell on the movie, think about his mind. <laughs> think about his mind. Because yeah. think about... Yeah. Every day, probably for the last 25, 30 years, he's training for that. You know, he's yes. training for that. He's getting the water. He's getting the supplements. He's like getting ready when the shit goes down. And he see people just yeah. living their life. And ah, not, nothing is going to happen. But the calling him crazy. Calling him crazy. And then the shit goes yeah. down. And then they ask for yeah. help. But let me tell you something. And I was talking that with a friend the, the other day. We never, brother, the, the problem is we, we are too young and we born in democracy. We born in freedom and we think the freedom is guaranteed, but freedom is yeah. not guaranteed, my brother. Freedom is no, not guaranteed. Not. We always one step from, from the madness, you know, one yeah. step from the madness. Think about people in China or in, in Russia. One day they thought, oh, okay, we are not really. Not really, because over there never been democracy, right? Before the yes, be, before the the Russia Revolution, the Chinese Revolution was the emperor on China and was the czar on Russia. So I think they are used to. Uh, but that's what's different with America. America never had a king. Brazil, a little bit, not much, but we are used to democracy in. in and but what i think in, in the end of the day is the, the freedom is always one step to to go away you know because i was watching a, another video yesterday from netflix the world war one you know and they showing the world war one and, and man so many people die because of world war one and world war two and world war two yeah. was the was because World War One, right? So everything is connected, yeah. and people and people, and, and like the world can go crazy like that, my brother. You know, like that. And you have nothing to do with nothing it. Nothing. You have to nothing do to do with it. Nothing to do. You are just you are just minding your own business, bro. Yeah. Doing your work Doing every your day, every day. With your family, yeah. taking care of your dog. You know. Yeah. And motherfuckers are now so TV, they're going to start open places and you need to fight for them. Fuck these guys, bro. Yeah, but, but, but let's be honest. One thing that I don't agree with, with, with the, the movie is if people want to kill America, they're just going to bomb, right? If Russia and China, they decide to go with war, it's just bombs now, you know? But you remember the theory? Yeah, the theory is to make them kill themselves, right? Yeah, but because if you imagine if Russia throws bombs against the United States, the United States will throw bombs against them, right? Yes, but at the at the same time, if they do what they're doing, like in the movie, somebody on the on the government knows Chinese and Russian people, they're gonna throw bomb anyways. Right? Imagine maybe, imagine maybe. if you're president of the United States and then you see your teeth falling out, you know, you see your crazy Tesla's bumping in the street you see airplane yeah. crashing and people were were throw fly throwing flyers right that to yes. america and you say man this is a terrorist attack this is russia this is let's you know you're going to die it's, it's like it's like in russia you see putin he doesn't have much thing to to lose you know if i am putin and i if i know i'm going to die i just release the bomb you know what I mean? Because I'm dying anyways. Fuck everybody. Yeah, don't you maybe, think they think like, like that? that yeah. Don't you? But do you remember the the the, the Cuba missile crisis? I remember that, of course. Yeah, maybe some maybe some guy with, you know, brother, 
it's tough, man. Dev destroy the world must be a tough choice. Ah, man, I don't think so. I think this guy doesn't... They, do you think Putin cares, bro? For, well, not Putin. Imagine if he was, imagine if he was Joe, Joe Biden or, or Barack Obama or Donald Trump, okay? You are seeing your country collapse. You are seeing some shit. And you're talking to the, to the motherfucking minister, minister of defense. Motherfucker, what, what the hell is happening? And he says, Cyber we are suffering an attack. Yeah. From who? We don't know yet. Might be Russia. Might be China. Might be fucking Osama Bin Laden coming from the dead, bro. And let me tell you something. What are you, are you going to do? You, you, yes. You are you going to try to throw bombs at them? You don't even know. You, you're not even sure. You have an idea, of course. You have an idea. Or I would are you say China. To, like, I would say China right away, my brother. If you have to guess, you would say China. China, one hundred. I would have. I would say. I would say Russia. Bro. Do you think who, I would say who is more? Who is stronger, China or Russia? Military, I think Russia. No way, brother. No I think way. He's still right. No, no way. Because it was, it man, was right now. I think, I, I think, idea, man, it was. China is the second biggest economy. Let's talk about only the budget in dollars. Okay. Okay. So Russia, yeah. sixty-five billion dollars is the military budget. Okay. How much do you think is China? I don't know, brother. A hundred billion right now is. Two nine. 293 billions, almost 300 billions. Wait, China is huge right now, brother. What the fuck, man? These motherfuckers are taking over. Military and, and military budget. 36% of China, percent of highest value in the world. Uh, highest value in the world. Uh, let's see. Active fighters, right? Russia, yeah. 1 million. China, 2 billion. Yeah. 2 million, 2 what? million, 2 million, 2 million. Okay, they have yeah. they have twice the size Reserve, of, of 2 million Russia's Russian army. In, in China 2 million. Uh, available for military. 30, 34 million. Let's say if they go to war. China yeah. China has 34 million people available for, for war. China 385 million. Brother, but the only thing that matters right now is how many nuclear China uh, has a lot. Remember, warheads. Ch China's f they they found Russia. They pay for for Russia. You know, they are allies. They are they are giving money to Russia, to Iran. You know, to 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 terrorist groups. China is China for sure is the biggest threat in the world right now on the free world. Man, it, it's just nuclear weapons. Now now we're talking about. Uh, yeah. Russia, the second most important state when it's come to research and developing and storing nuclear weapons, although the Russians managed to ca catch up with the Americans later on, it was only in 1949 that the first nuclear test... Blah, 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 blah. Nowadays, similarly to the United States, the Russians store a total of 6,490 uh, 6, warheads. Them. Uh, how people do how, how do people know that <laughs> they have the exact number That's what crazy. this is scarcely more than us when it comes to the numbers of deployed warheads the amount is the same in the case of americas so i think russia is tied with the americans okay we, 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 we also remember about the fact that russia conducted over 700 tests uh the china the last of five nuclear weapon states so it's the five right uh, so I think 200, 280 nuclear warheads. So yeah. they are way far behind, they right? Far, they yeah. are way far behind. Yeah, they're far yeah. behind the military tests. Yeah. You are, you, your country is suffering a cyber attack. What are you going to do? Are you going to try to bomb places or are you going to try to solve? <laughs> or are you going to do both? Because let me tell you something. If you, if man, you man, the bombs, man, let me tell you something. If the war starts, the war is over nowadays. Nowadays, yeah, for sure. We just need. They say we just need one atomic bomb, right, to destroy. Yeah. And the motherfucker have five thousand, bro. Motherfucker yeah, have five thousand, yeah. bro. Have you heard about the uh, strongest they have? No. They have a bomb that they never tested because they are afraid it will tilt the Earth. Tilt. Yeah, it's going to move the Earth on space. Really, move the yeah. trajectory. 
yeah, it's going to tilt it, brother. It's going to explode, and it's going to be such a a, a strong explosion. It will change the trajectory of Earth. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That that podcast went too long. We are talking about nuclear weapons and in MMA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was a good conversation. You know, I hope everybody uh, like it. Like I say, like the content, and we're going to post more and more about about the podcast. Training is being good, videos being being good. The only problem is we don't have UFC for the next four weeks, so we will have a lot of conversation. And I hope yeah. I hope you guys like the content. Thank you so much. What movie Iago. are we watching next, bro? Ah, let, we have to. We need we need a movie. We need a yeah. movie. We need a movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I will try to watch this because I sleep. I want to watch the whole movie. On Netflix, I'm going to tell you how it, what it is, but I think uh, there is nothing new on the on the on the field or something like that. It's a World War One movie. Okay, I'm going to I'm going, going to, to look it. and we talk about the the movie next. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try to find another post-apocalyptic movie. That's too, good brother, too. Because they are ah, great. but 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 to to close on on the movie, uh, I like the movie. I think the the whole the whole movie was good. And I like the end too. The, what do you think about the end of the movie? Just to finish. First of all, th that was a good joke, right? The girl. Yeah, the because friends with the friends. Do, yeah, with the friends. Do you remember the uh, the talking that she says that she has with her mom? Never gonna be able to watch the 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 friend the last episode. Yeah, but but she tells a story. She tells a story. She she tells a story about God. That there is a guy that is pray for God every day for God to save him. Do you remember that? No. And God sends him. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I remember. Send him the airplane. He sent him this and that. And he didn't take the chopper and yeah. stuff. And he didn't take. And then she says, "I'm tired of waiting." Yeah, oh. that's true. She, she says that I'm tired of it. She's tired of. She was praying everything that was happening. With everything that was happening, she was praying to God to make her able to watch the fucking friends finale. Right? Yes, that's and true. And she says, "I'm tired of waiting." That God is not giving. That's me. true. But actually, that's a good thing. She went, but but you remember the the uh, the first time she goes into the forest, she sees the house with the bunker that has the friends movies, and she only sees the house because she sees animals. Yeah, she sees the deers earlier in the movie, and then she call, she talks to her brother. Let's I need go to over go there, to the yeah. forest with me. Yeah, because I saw deers and I won't see them again. And then she tries to follow the deers and she sees the house. So this is kind of what God sends for her, right? Yeah. God sends God sends the, the deers. So she sees the deers. She goes there because of friends. But actually what is happening is that she's, she's going to save her family. Yeah. Because she found the bunker. So that's a good thing. Maybe it's, it's because of that, the, the animals, right? God sent God sent them the animals so they so they could find the bunker. Man. And, and I don't know, man. I don't know. I, we have a lot of stuff to 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 talk yet, but the podcast is is getting too big. But but crazy bunker, right? Crazy yeah, bunker. Yeah, crazy bunker. How, how, how many times they would leave over there? Yeah, man. Probably, man. These bunkers, I think they they could do like ah, man. Years, we I have another thing to talk. Did you see? Uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is building a 1.3 billion bunker on Hawaii. No, I didn't see that. Yeah, he, I was. He is. Let yeah, me check. so that's why I'm, this Zuckerberg. movie, brother. This movie is telling us something, my brother. Something is going. You you told me this morning that a lot of people were talking shit about the movie because of Barack Obama and, and Michelle Obama was involved in there. Did you talk that movie? Was talking shit about Republicans? No, no, that's what's funny. Man, I didn't, I find I didn't that, see. Yeah. I didn't see the movie that no, way. Bro. No way, not not that way, not the way exactly. I think, I think them them movie expose a lot of uh, of we what we consider hypocrisy, especially yeah. from liberals. Like like I say, because the movie the whole point was to show Julia Roberts and the family as weak, right? That's what I saw. Yeah, not not only weak, but but they were racist. racist in yeah, support. weak. Yeah. And like, and and like, they were lucky that they went to the outside the city, like they said, man. If yeah, because they saw the city, and that's the problem. Because again, po po I'm we getting political again. But if you see, 
most of people from big cities, they are liberals, right? If you go to New York, California, and if you go to places like Texas or, or like Alaska or like places that people live off the land or, the, or there is less people, they tend to be more Republican because I think they tend to be like that guy, yeah. the, the Bryce Mitchell from the movie, right? Right, Taking care of himself. But, but that was surprising me. And, and I, and I sent a message to Jurandir asking about that, right? Because he's a specialist in the movie. And he was, and he was talking about that. And I say, man, why, why the fuck Barack Obama would like a character like Julia Roberts on the movie? And he didn't answer me, to be honest, right? Yeah. I think, but let, I think he would, he don't want to talk about politics. Yeah, but it's it's nice, man, because people need to understand that the film is, of course, the film tweets about uh, uh, hypocrites and stuff, but I think that we need to, to think about too. It's not because the movie was had Barack Obama involved, that would be a movie that Barack Obama is talking shit about Republicans, right? Yeah, or even, but, but no, but I think, I think that's not what they want to say. They want to say is, the guy is a former president talking about a conspiracy theorist movie, you know, and a movie that like is a preview, and that's who, that's why I want to got in this in this reportage about Mark, Mark Zuckerberg building a hundred million Hawaii compound with massive underground bunker, you know. Yeah. So, so they talking about the dimensions. Uh, the the billionaire spent one hundred and seven million to purchase the land to build his ranch, and inside the ranch. He's going to build a bunker. So maybe, maybe. And, and do you remember on the movie what he was saying? The the George, when he's talking about the client, if I tell you who my client is, you're gonna know. You know. Yes. yes. You know? Maybe it's a Zuckerberg, maybe it's a Elon Musk, maybe, you know? Yeah, for sure, for <laughs> sure. One of these guys is yeah. a Oprah or somebody like that, like a big name. Yeah. They they know the shit is going down and they say, okay. I'm done with that shit. But one thing is for sure. After the movie, I, I told to my wife, I'm going to the to the gun store to get more ammo, my brother, because ammo. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. No, no, because really, really. And do you remember on 2020 with all the protests, the George yeah. Floyd, all these pro people were going crazy on the street, my brother. Yes. People were breaking everything if you don't have a gun and 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 forbidding god something help to you to your house to your family you dumb my brother because like yes, i said yes. we are too used to to a peaceful world brother but if the war is yeah. coming if man people change right away that's why what i like about the movie right because yeah soon as the internet goes down soon electricity is not working anymore Everybody's savage, my brother. Yes, my brother, including myself, brother. I will not. I will not be able to edit. Videos, no, so no. I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to rub my people. Video. Brother. Let I me tell you something. Twenty-four hours without electricity, police is gone. You know, there yeah. is no radio. People go and start to steal, to rape, to murder, to do. People, because you know why people don't do that. Because they fear the consequences, bro. They don't want to go to the jail. They don't want to be uh, uh, known as uh, as thief, you know. But without electricity, we dumb, my brother. So, so yes, it's yeah, always yeah. a possibility. And I think the, the movie just show us, right? It is already a big podcast, my brother. Fuck that, I need to ask. What, what do you think? Because you said, ah, I don't think the message of the movie was there. I, th I don't think the message of the movie was that true? You know, they weren't trying to prove anything about Barack Obama stuff. But you think Barack Obama did the movie because it was a conspiracy? No, not a, consp a, a conspiracy. Theory. I think they, I think the movie I don't know. is it's just like Black Mirror. Black Mirror, people think Black Mirror talks about technology. Black Mirror never talks about technology, bro. The technology is just the background of the thing, you know? To show how people are. Yes. To show how people react to stuff. This movie for me is the same thing. Yes. It's not about the, the it's not about the word. The attack. The, it's about the cyber people, attack. Right, right. It's about how people, how people do, how people react. And I just realized it's something. Do you remember the end when Ethan Hawke is desperate, asking for for help? Yes. For his kids. Yes. 
he's he's talking to Bryce Mitchell. Yes. And he he's almost crying and stuff. Yes. It's just like uh the the lady that he he left behind hit the car. Bro. Yes. Yes. You know, she she was desperate. He couldn't understand what she was saying, but she was clearly desperate and she, he didn't do anything for her. And then after in the movie, the guy that was supposed to be a bad guy, you know, Bryce Mitchell was supposed to be the bad guy. I'm not going to help him. He helped him. Ah, in, in exchange of for money. Of course, in exchange for money, yes. But but money doesn't mean money doesn't mean shit like he said. The money doesn't mean shit right now, bro. Nobody Yeah. But or, or maybe or maybe you will, right? Because if people you know that maybe you just use it to trade stuff so as we use it. Yeah. But you know, I don't I don't understand why people were mad of the movie. Because of the movie, because of Barack Obama, brother, he did nothing bad. Ah, it's, movie, po yeah. it's politics, but yeah, I think exactly. I think the the problem is some people thought that he's sending a message, right, with this movie and sending a message yeah, that bro. America is going down. I I really just think it's just a movie. I was just entertaining yes, the too. idea because it's funny. You have a guy like Barack Obama helping in a movie, but we saw. His whole probably is not that important. He's not he's not saying how that the story is going to be tell, right? So in the end of the day, it's just market marketing. You know? I'm gonna I'm gonna search for that, but I, I really think he liked the book and he probably wanted to do a movie about that book and stuff. And it was nice. Bro. Yeah. If he did, if he if he was that, it was nice. It was a, for me, it was a great if, movie, brother. I yeah, as you it was a great I was movie. tense. I was tense. I like I like the end. I like the whole premise. I like a lot of people got mad because there is no there is no end. And I think that's what is that what is so good about this movie because yes. now we can uh, me personally I think they go to the bunker and I think if this movie go exceptionally well they can do a continuation, you know? But but I yeah. think the continuation is bo is going to be worse than the first movie. You know, B because yeah, it's never it's never that good. No, it's not gonna depends on the movie. Depends on the movie, but especially on this one because I think what got us tense and what what got us wondering about what is happening was not knowing what's happening. What is this? What yes. is going on? Yes. But now they're going to have they're going to ha they will have to show the war in people fight this. Yeah. So they so in, in in the next movie. They will show the actually war because now we know it's a war. Well, I hope there's no second movie. I like it this way. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. I like this way. Uh, first fight, I didn't watch. Second fight, I didn't watch. Third fight, I did watch. Taji, Ulan by Calvin, Cody, Duda. And let me yeah. tell you something. Cody Durbin surprised me a lot on the fight. Why is that? You know why? Because, because I thought he would be dominated, you know? And even though he was not dominated, but I mean, the, the other guy, Russian guy, wrestler, but Cody Durden was giving him a lot of trouble. On the feet, know? right? On the feet, yes, yeah. yes. And, and uh, the other guy is very good at, at grappling and stuff. And Cody Durden did a mistake, but I was very surprised uh, how he was fighting the hands, like, you not letting the, the rear naked choke sink in, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, man, that was, that was a very good scrap. That, that was a very good, uh, that was a very good fight. And, unfortunately, Cody Durden lost, but he, he is a dog. Very nice to watch. And let me tell you another thing. I couldn't be more wrong about Ariane Lipsky, the yeah. king of violence. Yeah, yeah. Great performance, bro. Great performance. I think I, I, I this is not a joke, but I think it real. I really think G Jesus helped her on that performance. Okay, it's, it's not like Bryce Mitchell stuff. I really think Jesus did help her because uh, I know a couple weeks ago. Do you remember the photo of Vicente being baptized yep. on the water? Of course. She was there too, you know? Okay. So a lot of Brazilians, they are going to the same church, uh, uh, worship, to worship God. And somebody is like helping them to, to convert and to be more religions and stuff. And I really think uh, they help her 
because I never saw her like that. And I, I follow her career for a long time. But the way she was fighting, she was with the Holy Spirit, my brother. Yes. You know what I mean? Something, somebody was guiding her to... But maybe that's not a fair statement because God is guiding her to punch another girl in the face for money. Yeah, what about the other girl? <laughs> God, God is guiding her to be punished on, on an octagon ring to be the other people to see. Can't be that, brother. Yeah, I and I, I know what you what you mean about that, but I think sometimes God uses us as a tool, you know? Yeah, for to sure. To bring justice to the world, my brother. Yeah. You know, like a... Uh, I don't know how to say that in English, but there was a guy, Atila Uno. Yeah, King Atila of the de Hans. King of the Hans. De, I, I, Atila the Han, yeah. yeah. Scourge of God. Yeah. So, the scourge of God. Atila the Han. The Han. Atila Uno in Portuguese. And we were talking about God, right? Yeah. Like, and people believe that Atila, he was used by God to punish us Christians, you know? Okay. So maybe that was what, I don't know if you can correlate with that, right? Yeah. But maybe he was using Ariane Lipsky. I don't know what reason made him to do that, but I don't know. I saw, I saw the Holy Spirit on her eyes, my brother, <laughs> okay, because bro. she was on fire. And jokes aside, I really think like when you believe in some in something that is bigger than you, uh, that can help you a lot. And, yeah. I, and, and I think that conversion and she did the same post as Vicente, like being baptized and stuff. I really think that give her a different meaning for, for the next fight. And she was on fire, really, because she was beating the other girl on the striking and she was beating the other girl on the... On the on the ground too, you know, yeah. on, on Casey O'Neill Bass, and was a was a beat down. Let's be honest. And on the end of the day, she she gave up, you know. And now uh, that's what's tough because uh, Casey O'Neill, she had a lot of hype behind behind her, especially because she beat uh, Antonia Chevichenko, right? Chevichenko brother, young brother. But but sister, then she right? lost to Jennifer uh, sister yeah sister I'm sorry, and then she lost to Jennifer Maya and Ariane Lipsky so, I think the hype is going to slowly being, going down you know if you know what I mean yeah but she's still so young right 26 years old I hope she 26 can, very young yeah I hope she can pass these fights and leave them behind so so she can, you know win again and, and be tough be a competition yes that's true. Cody Garbrandt and Brian Kelleher. Man, the prelim cards were good, right? Yeah. Did you see the fight? Yeah, I see. I saw that. Do you still think Cody Garbrandt has what it takes to be a champion? Brother, it's hard to say, right? But he, he's still with the chaos, brother. V very hard to say, especially because Brian Kelleher, 37, he was giving Cody troubles in the beginning of the fight. If you know what I mean. So, was not uh, the, especially with the cough kicks, he was throwing some cough kicks, and she and and Cody was feeling it a lot. And then he found the knockout because he's a knockout artist. Yeah, and if you see uh, Cody Garbrandt record, you're going to see that facing the toughest competition, he lost. He lost. You know, like Cody Garbrandt. You mean? Yeah, Cody Garbrandt. So because yeah, you... but the. The tough call compet I don't know. It, it, it's what you think about Hobby Fuentes. I think he's a great boxer. But I like his style a lot and stuff. And it was a decision, you know. Hobby Fuentes is number nine. Yeah, yeah. Pedro Muñoz, Pedro Muñoz also. Muñoz. Pedro Muñoz also. Yeah, but that was a long time, round. 2019. Yeah. And then he beat Rafael Susan, and then Travis Jones and Brian Kelly. I don't think he's going to. To beat a guy like Davidson Figueiredo, I will be honest with you. Yeah, so, I don't think so. I'm maybe. But he's still very young, 32, former yeah. champion. And I don't know what UFC is going to do about that. Maybe the confidence boosts him again, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Every time that you knock somebody out, that you finish somebody out, that you have a great performance, of course, that's going to be great for your confidence. But let's be honest, Brian Kelleher, he's a 
tough guy with uh with power yeah. right and other than that he's coming off a lot of losses you know especially on the ground he beat kevin croon but i thought he would beat cody gabriel just because because cody is not on a good place but let me tell you something irene aldana and carol rosa the war was a war right yeah the war did you, did you think that the result was fair yeah brother yeah i think so that was fair yeah me i thought carol rosa may maybe won may have won have you seen think. the scorecards let me check this irene aldana no. versus carol rosa scorecard let me check all the judges scored the fight the same okay first round was 10 uh 9 for carol rosa and the the other two was 10 9 for irene aldana of course so 29 28 for for irene aldana and i think that's a good but i think that's a good decision i'm not i, I, I not wasn't mad it was, it. yeah it wasn't bad it was a war brother it could go either way of course because it was a war uh best yeah. fight of the night for sure that was amazing but i want to talk about Paddy Pimblet and Tony Ferguson, my friend. And let me tell you something. Tony Ferguson is done. I don't know if you know, but he got cut today on UFC. He was released. Really? He's not a UFC. Yeah. I didn't saw that, brother. I didn't saw that. Yeah. Let me let me check. Fighter added Michael Venom Page. No, there's no there's no updates today. No? Uh I don't know where I see that. Let me see. Somebody let me told check. me. I can't find news. I can't find the news. Uh, so so maybe I'm just uh, spreading fake news. And you think Tony is going to try a, a PFL or bare knuckle or some, something crazy like that? I don't even know if the promotion is going to want him. Yeah. Maybe bare knuckle, brother. Maybe Seven, seven losses in a row. Yeah, that's... Last time that he beat somebody was Donald Cerrone in 2019. That's a long time. Yeah. That is a that's long a long time. That's a long, long time. And he's 39, my brother. That's just too much. Seven losses. I don't know. I think he should open a gym, you know? Yeah. He he He's done a lot. And I don't know. Lose to a guy like Paddy Pimblich. And let's be honest. I think that fight was worse for Paddy Pimblich. Because now it, we can see clearly that he cannot hang in the top of the division no. brother. he's a very no. bad he's a very bad striker very sloppy his cardio sucks tony ferguson was not even trying to take him down and he was getting tired yeah you know on the third round he was tired he was exhausted brother exhausted uh, and if and if he couldn't take tony uh to the ground on that third round tony would have knocked him out him out probably brother. he was eating all the punches if that fight was five rounds, Tony would beat him. Yes. And and look, Jerry Gordon, unanimous decision. We we remember that was a robbery. Yeah. Jordan Levitt and Rodrigo Vargas, very bad. Yeah. This guy, Rodrigo Vargas, I don't even know how he got in the UFC. He, I remember watching very bad. Jordan Levitt, I cannot I I don't need to talk. He's bad. And what surprised me that he beat Luigi Vendramini, because Luigi Vendramini is pretty good. Paddy, he, he stayed one year without fighting, right? His fight against Jared Gordon was December 2022, and now he, he fought Ferguson. I don't know if he's going to become more active, but if I have to guess, I think... I don't know if UFC wants to do that with him, but I think he's fighting Bobby Green, brother. Paddy Pimblich? Yeah. I think, I think he is fighting... I think he's fighting Bobby Green for sure. Yeah, I think I he's no next. Doubt. I think his next fight is Bobby he's, Green for for sure, for sure. That maybe we should do a video about that because that's going to be the fight. Yeah, makes a lot of sense, right? Bobby Green a lot just of sense. Uh, Tony Ferguson too. They uh, Paddy Pimblish now is probably close for the top fifteen. I don't think they are giving him other guy than, than Bobby Green because I don't think there's no one he can beat on the top five. 50. Yes. And, and, and I don't think he can beat Bobby Green too, bro. To be a really yeah, I don't I, think he can beat Bobby Green. I think Bobby Green I don't will think destroy he can Bobby him Bobby on the feet, brother. But, but I think at the same time, 
that's the the most favorable matchup for him. Yes, yes. Look at the top 15. Tell me another name Pedro Pibes could can put up a fight, bro. Yeah, no, no, I don't think so. Man, that was terrible to watch the fight. In the other hand, we have Xavi Kac, Rakimanov yeah. versus Steven Thompson. And I think this guy is going to be champion. Do you think he's fighting for the tax for the title next? Yeah, I think so. I think so because of what Dana White said on the post fight press conference. They asked Dana White if Belal is fighting for the title next, and Dana White said, "I don't know." Yeah, and you see that Kobe. We're going to talk about Kobe, but Kobe is avoiding this guy yeah. at all costs. Yeah, at all costs. I never, man. Kobe always talking about himself like this tough dude, but this last UFC we just saw how weak he is like man he was calling for wonder boy are you are you crazy yeah because people were saying ah do you think you should be you should fight hackman of the guy that win and he wants to fight steven thompson that loss yes you know that makes zero sense but i was impressed ab about hackman of because he is a good striker and he showed us on that fight that he can work on the cage Right, he he can take the back, he can finish. Let me let me check Shavkat's record. No, he's 18 and 0. Yeah, but I want to see who who were his last fights. So he beat New Magni, beat Jeff New, beat Carlston Harris. Jeff New is yeah. very tough, you know. Yeah. New Magni he is well known. Michel Prazeres, uh, he was a tough guy from Brazil. Alex Oliveira, tough guy from Brazil. So and after that. Uh, he fought on, on M M1 Challenge. That was a good show in Russia. So yeah, but if you think about who who is who is doing your fight, brother? Doing his fight, Jack Della Madalena makes zero sense. Zero sense. That's a, a Dana White privilege, right? Yeah. Jack Della Madalena is, is uh, 11 on the rank. His brother Gilbert Brazil is all is number four. That's a big step for Jack Della Madalena. I hope Durio beats him. I hope to. I hope to. But you know what's the problem with that division? Welterweight division. We, we have to, to see what fights make sense. And Hinach, Michael Chase, Neil Magny, Kevin Holland is fight MVP. Yeah. Uh, so we have Ian Machado fighting. Joff New uh, on UFC 29. Joff New. Yeah. We have Vicente Luque, and Vicente is not fighting Durinho. Let me tell right? you something. Have you, have you talked with Vicente? About the fight? Yeah. No, not because really. Because there's something really weird happening here. I don't think UFC wanted to put Luki on the 299 card, bro. Because Machado Gary was was with pneumonia, right? And then the fight, of course, was supposed to be rescheduled. So I thought they would put Ian Gary and Vicente Luki on 299. But they didn't. And when Dana White, Dana White was asking about Vicente Luki, he answered. We offered a lot of fights to Vicente Luque. He denied them all. Really? Yeah. So I think Luque wanted to fight Machado Gary yet, but UFC just took him out of the equation, you know? Yeah. I yes, think he just put sure. Geoff Neal on, the, on his place. And that was, a, that was yeah. fucking bad for Luque. Bro. I don't know who is Luque fighting next. Probably yeah. Shambrady. But if you see Gilbert Burns, right? Yeah. He's not fighting Stephen Thompson. No. Maybe he could fight Shambrady. He's not fighting Vicente Luque. He's not fighting Ian Machado. So then we have Jack Della Madalena. So uh, a lot of these fights, they make because of the timing. Yeah. Because of the timing, you know. And I, I don't see any sense, you know. But Durinho, is, he's been out for a, for a long time. And I think after Madalena performance, I think he, he saw something, you know. He's a good striker. But do you remember when he fought the, the, the guy? that got the fight in short notice and the guy took him down several times so i don't know man i don't know we, i have to watch more fights to have my opinion but that that fight doesn't make any sense for me neither for me neither after hackmanov and thompson we had alexandre pantoja uh, i thought four rounds to one easy to score very easy fight to score i think pantoja beat the shit of Reval, but he got tired. Yes. But you know what you know what you know what is the problem? Pantoja is too uh 
aggressive. Yeah, he is. Too aggressive, brother. Fighting all the time, shooting for takedowns all the time. He's too, too aggressive. But Roy Val, I, I, I tell you this, he was not ready for wrestling. You know, he no. was not a scramble. Pantoja is controlling no. him. I saw a lot of people talking shit about Pantoja games because Pantoja was annulating him, was just controlling. But guess what? If Pantoja was Russian, everybody would say, ah, oh, man, wrestling and That's this and that. Just, true. That's just true. because he's Brazilian, you know, if his name was... Alexander Magomedov, they would say, man, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, that's the game. Yeah. You know, he's so smart. He's ready to, to dominate him five rounds. But since he's Brazilian, they want the motherfucker to go over there and throw strikes. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? That's true. But was a domination. He got tired on the on the on the on the end of the fight, but he was able to control the fight and to guarantee an easy win. For me, it was an easy win. What are your thoughts about that? The scorecards of the fight, only one judge gave the 50 rounds for Brendan Weibel, right? All the other judges, judges was 50-45 for Alexandre Pantoja. I think that's, that's uh, you always talk about that when you are advising people to, to about fighting and stuff. You say the wrestling. When I'm advising people to not bet. To not, to not bet, exactly. You always say the wrestling is the most important thing. And I think this fight, Pantoja against Rival, proves that, right? Because I don't know if you remember, but on the third round, Pantoja was already tired. Third yes. round, we, we watched it on the, the reaction. You, you could see the third round starts. He makes a face like, woof. Thank, thank you. I, I beat this guy for three rounds now. I just need to, to control the, the rest of the fight. And he won the fight with wrestling, right? And Brandon Royal, yes. of course, is that exactly what you said? He was not ready, not even close, brother. He was not even close to be ready for Pantoja's wrestling. And people that are, are talking about Pantoja and talking shit, let me tell you something. I didn't like the fight that much, but we need to remember, brother, his fight against Brandon Moreno was one of the best fights we've all, we've all seen, brother. That fight was amazing, brother. And Pantoja even asked for forgiveness on the on the. Yes. Pre, on the yeah, on the, on the interview, mic. yeah, on the mic. Yeah, he said he knew that he wasn't like a, a very entertaining fight, but it's like what you said on the fight. What uh, can you do, my brother? Yeah, You're fighting yeah. for a dog. And people don't know about that, but man, there is so much things going on, right? Yeah, because so much stage, brother. Man, imagine how much money he made on on, on the... Let, let's see. Pay-per-view buys shot up after nasty press conference. So after... Uh, UFC 296 pre fight press conference marked by, marked by controversy and personal attacks reported led to significant spike in pay per view sales. Yeah, he's, he said UFC, 25%. 25%. You know, so that's money on Pantoja's pocket. Yeah. Uh, so Dana White reveals the pay per view number. Let me see. He doesn't give the numbers, but that's crazy. 25% just on the press conference. Yes. You have to give that the for Kobe brother. Yeah, <laughs> he knows how to sell fight. Yeah, I, I, but uh, unfortunately for him, he didn't got the money. Yeah, you know. So I don't have the pay per views. But that being said, I think Pantoja was thinking about that. You know, pay per view numbers, win the fight, have one more title defense. You know, and just adding up to his legacy and to 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 the welfare of his family the winner of the title fight gets the money for the pay-per-view no the 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 champion the always the champion. champion okay even even if he loses he will still get the pay-per-view but okay. guess what next time you're gonna get more money and more pay-per-views on the next defense okay so uh you have man it, it's hard to be a fighter you have to go over there and you have to literally Kill a lion a day, my brother, you know, to yeah. just to survive. And I think that plays a, 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 a huge role. And that's good for him because he was on that card. He didn't have to talk all that shit, but he profited from the shit that was talk. You know what I mean? Exactly. That was awesome for Pantoja. And then we have Leon Edwards and Kobe Covington, but I don't want to talk too much about that, you know what? Because we made a video only talking about that. I will talk easy i will talk uh fast about that for me it was a beautiful performance by leon edwards kobe coviton just was not ready for the distance for the timing and 
Leon even got uh, two takedowns reverse, you know, on the grappling. Uh, I, I I would not say he out grappling Kobe because on the last round Kobe uh, keep him on the on the on the on the ground. But there was an easy fight to score for me. Fourth one to Leon Edwards. If you are a huge Kobe fan, you could see three to one, three to two, but easily. Let's be honest. Four to one to Leon Edwards. Easy fight to score. A lot of people talking shit about Leon Edwards being uh, a not exciting champion. Um, man, I think it was a good fight. What do you think, Yago? For me, it was an amazing fight, and I was really surprised when I saw people talking shit about him. Really, really, really surprised. Man, he dominated the fight. His striking was just amazing, amazing. He cheered that leg, you know, and... I was disappointed with Kobe Covito performance. I was not cheering for him, but I thought he would be a fighter. You know, I thought he would do things on the first three rounds, and he didn't. But that's that's it for me. Almost two hours in another podcast. Thank you so much, everybody who's watching. Thank you so much, Iago the Editor. Thank you, my brother.